Coming up, a motion of no confidence moved against the Health Minister by State Labor. One Nation candidate, Steve Dixon, sensationally quits politics over a lewd video of him groping dancers in a strip club. The head of Boeing faces the public for the first time since the Ethiopian Airlines disaster. A Tassie teenager has been found alive and well after missing for more than three days. And Hobart Hurricane star James Faulkner is forced to declare he's not gay following confusion surrounding a social media post. For these stories and more, please join the 7 Tasmania News Team, your local news team, right here at 6. Tonight, the State Health Minister in the crosshairs again as a no-confidence motion is moved against Michael Ferguson. Tasmanian cricketer James Faulkner caught up in a global social media storm. A woman allegedly threatened with an iron bar during a brazen hold-up. A truck driver narrowly avoids a collision on the Bass Highway. The Boeing boss who refuses to admit faults over two fatal crashes. And two Tasmanian newspapers change owner. Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Joe Palmer begins now. Good evening everyone. It's set to be a long night in State Parliament as debate over Michael Ferguson's ministerial performance heats up. Labor says the Health Minister should be sacked immediately, but the Premier is standing by his experienced Cabinet colleague. The no confidence motion was no surprise. As for what came next... There is not a single member of their backbench, Madam Speaker, who's prepared to stand up and defend him. Andrew McCarthy, 7 Tasmania News. The no confidence motion has delayed debate on the government's latest attempt at imposing mandatory minimum sentences for serious sexual offences against children. Previous efforts to pass the legislation failed in 2017. Uh, the Liberal Party have been steadfast and very strong with our uh, uh, position in relation to child sex offenders and that is that they should serve guaranteed jail time. One Nation's chances at the federal election have been severely dented, with a Senate candidate forced to quit the race over a strip club scandal. Steve Dixon's behaviour was described as disgusting by Pauline Hanson, just as the leaders of the major parties remained locked in a political debate. Copying a serve... <laughs> ..is all part of life on the campaign trail for Scott Morrison when clear messaging is the real ball game. And political editor Mark Riley joins us now from Perth. Mark, we're past the campaign halfway point. How is each camp faring? Well, I think last night's leaders' debate could really be a turning point. Bill Shorten certainly emerged from that with a much greater level of confidence and Labor is clearly ahead any real chance of winning this election. Pre-polling began yesterday, 110,000 people on the first day, so people are voting already and the next two and a half weeks will certainly tell. They will indeed. Thank you very much for that. Mark Riley joining us there from Perth. Tasmanian cricketer James Faulkner has been caught in a storm of worldwide attention after a social media post intended as a joke was widely reported as fact. Our sports reporter Tom Cooper has been following the story. Good evening, Tom. It looks like not everyone saw the funny side. Good evening, Joe. No, they certainly didn't. The Hobart Hurricanes all-rounder came under heavy scrutiny today following an Instagram post he put up last night saying he was out at a birthday dinner with his boyfriend, referring to his best mate. It's understood that Faulkner intended it to be a bit of a joke. Faulkner and Cricket Tasmania were unavailable to provide any further comment today. Back to you, Joe. OK, thank you very much for that, Tom. We'll see you a little later with more from the Sports Desk. A man has been charged after allegedly threatening a female hotel worker with an iron bar during a robbery early this morning. Police say an intruder entered Launceston City Park Grand Hotel just before 6am and stole nearly $2,000 worth of goods. A 30-year-old Norwood man was arrested and charged a short time later. The woman was uninjured. 
Disaster was narrowly avoided on the Bass Highway this morning when a car spun into the path of an oncoming truck. Police praised the actions of the truck driver who managed to swerve his semi-trailer out of harm's way. A truck lies slumped on the side of the highway. Nearby, a station wagon sits scratched and dented. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. An 81-year-old woman has been taken to the Royal Hobart Hospital this afternoon after being hit by a car in Hobart just before 3 o'clock. Tasmania Police says the woman was crossing the Victoria Street intersection when she was hit by a car at low speed, being driven by a 49-year-old man. Virgin Australia has postponed its order of troubled Boeing 737 MAX aircraft for six years, saying the American company needs time to restore faith in safety. The manufacturer's CEO was trying to do that today, fronting angry shareholders for the first time since two deadly crashes. Exactly six months after the first of two deadly crashes, Boeing's CEO faced the music. In the United States, Amelia Brace, 7 News. Two Tasmanian newspapers have been sold off. Nine Entertainment has confirmed the sale of 170 newspaper titles following its merger with Fairfax Media last year. Former Fairfax executive Anthony Catalano and the Thorny Investment Group have purchased Australian Community Media for $115 million. The sale includes a vast array of regional and rural newspapers, including Tasmania's Examiner and Advocate titles. The sale is expected to be completed by June 30. A 16-year-old who went missing for more than three days has now been found safe and well. Aidan Fry was returned to his care home at around 10.45 last night. Police are thanking members of the public for their assistance. Well, still to come in our broadcast tonight, a Tasmanian council demands a documentary film be banned. The leader of Islamic State shows his face for the first time in five years in a chilling video. And see the beluga whale, which could actually be a spy. Welcome back. Tasmania's West Coast Council is demanding a film highlighting environmental concerns be pulled and a public apology issued from its makers. The documentary, Where the River Runs Red, follows the story of mining's legacy in Queenstown. But the council has labelled the film sensationalist and claims it's deliberately trying to hurt the community. Producer Nick Flynn said the four-week production tried to include as many residents as possible and strove to to document the town's resilience. A haunting social media post has shown the final moments before a young driver was killed in a head-on crash. Police are now investigating if the distraction of the camera played a part in the tragedy. The final chilling moments of a young woman's life caught on camera and sent out to friends on Snapchat. Tom Saker, 7 News. A student's mother has stabbed a teacher at a Byron Bay primary school. The woman attacked the male teacher with a pair of scissors this morning, sending the school into lockdown. At first, my initial reaction, I was shocked and, and worried for my children. I've got two children in the school and they've been locked down in the hall. After weeks of evidence, a jury is now deciding the fate of a former US police officer who killed Australian woman Justine Damon Ruzchek. Mohammed Noor's lawyer argued the shooting was tragic but not a crime. While prosecutors said there was no reason for Justine to be gunned down by an officer she'd called for help. For Justine's family, her fiancé, it's been a nearly two-year wait for justice. In Minneapolis, Paul Kadak, 7 News. 
The leader of Islamic State has shown his face for the first time in five years in a chilling propaganda video. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi acknowledged defeat in the group's last stronghold in Syria, but said it has increased its rage. He also commended the Sri Lanka Easter bombings. The 18-minute clip is the first time Bakr al-Baghdadi has spoken publicly since 2014, which was at the height of the group's power. Japan has ushered in a new era with Emperor Akihito abdicating his throne after 31 years. In a rare move, the 85-year-old felt it was time to step aside and pass the symbolic role to his son. But for now, Tom Cooper will be joining us a little later in our bulletin with a look at the day's sport news. With David Warner preparing for his return to the Australian cricket team following a sensational stint in the IPL. Sydney's start to the season going from bad to worse with Lance Franklin ruled out for another game. And Steve Glenny extends his lead as the Target Tasmania field heads northwest. Tom will have those stories for you shortly, but first after the break, we'll recap the day's headlines. And then how a simple walk could improve brain function in older Australians. And we bring you a sneak peek of this year's Festival of Voices. Welcome back everyone, these are some of the stories making headlines tonight. Tasmanian cricketer James Faulkner forced to clarify a social media post where he appeared to out himself as gay. A truck driver narrowly avoids a collision on the Bass Highway. The Boeing boss refuses to admit fault over two fatal crashes. And the examiner and advocate sold to a new owner. We'd return now to our story from the previous break and symbolising a lost generation, five university students killed in World War I before they completed their studies were today finally awarded their degrees. A graduation more than a century in the making for five pharmacy students, young leaders of our nation. Oh, what a great story. Well, the Festival of Voices has officially launched its program for 2019 and it's sure to excite Tasmanian crowds. We were given a sneak peek at what to expect in this year's singing extravaganza. The gentle sound of young voices echoing across the atrium. Now let's take a look at the day's business and finance news with thanks to TASPLAN, your local not-for-profit Tasmanian super fund. The Australian share market has closed lower for a second day, dragged down by the energy, mining and utility sectors. The ASX 200 index fell 34 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 70.37 US cents and 54.39 Great British pence. Time to talk sport now. We welcome back Tom Cooper. Tom, Big Ben does it again. Hello again, Joe. Yeah, the Aussie proved instrumental in helping the 76ers level their playoff series against Toronto. We'll have more on that very shortly. Also coming up, Steve Smith all clear on the injury front and the Hobart Huskies women's side keen to keep their winning momentum alive. Welcome back. Footy first and Melbourne's Jack Viney might be sidelined with a shoulder injury, but that won't stop the co-captain from taking the lead over the coming fortnight. Viney is on the mend since he came off second best in one of the biggest hits of the year. Sitting on the sidelines is never easy, especially when you're languishing at the bottom of the ladder. You've got to find uh, new ways of trying to lead. Um, so, yeah, I'll be looking to, to try and... Uh... The Hobart Huskies women's side is preparing for its biggest test of the NBL1 season up against the undefeated Bendigo Braves. While the men will be out to turn things around following a shaky start to their campaign. Coming off two dominant performances on the road to make it four wins and one loss for the season, the Huskies feel like they can match it with anyone in the competition. 
Jason White's dream of claiming a record equaling eighth Targa Tasmania title could be over with mechanical headaches causing setbacks on day two of the rally. More than 260 cars roared through the northwest today with Launceston's Steve Glennie extending his lead at the front. After a fast start in Georgetown yesterday, Steve Glennie kept the good times rolling. After putting in a brief audition for a spot in the outfield, the trio eventually moved on to greener pastures. Deary me, Joe, And that is it for sport this Tuesday night. Deary me indeed. No Thank good. you very much for that, Tom. <laughs> Peter Murphy will join us right after the break with the day's weather. Good evening, Dunalley. Friendly beaches in Hobart, all with our high today of 22 degrees. Launceston 19, Burnie and Devonport 18. Temperatures mostly around or above average. St Helens and Grove 21, Strawn and the Islands 19. Smithton and Ouse reached 18 degrees. Lowhead 17, Lyawini 13 today. Now the north and northwest caught most of the cloud today. The thin high cloud also drifted down the west coast as well. The east and central parts of the country under mid to high level cloud. Another band of cloud runs along the the south coast of Western Australia. Tomorrow the high is off to our east with a complex low pressure system to our west containing a cold front and troughs which will affect South Australia. The winds north to north easterly at 10 to 20 knots reaching 25 knots over the north. There will be a gradual shift to the east northeast at similar speeds later. Hobart tomorrow 21 degrees, possible light rain later in the day, 20 the high for Jeeveston and 19 the top for Bothwell with that same sort of forecast. 21 with rain developing for Launceston, 18 the top for Devonport with rain developing, rain on the way too for Cressy, a high of 20. 18 the high for Burnie with rain on the way, maybe a late storm as well, 22 for Strawn and Curry a late storm and 20 degrees. St Helens a light shower and some late rain, 19, 21 the top for Swansea, Orford possible light late rain and 20. On Thursday, rain over the northwest, extending statewide during the day, but only light over the east. Showers on Friday, mainly over the north and west, with west to northwesterly winds. And on Saturday, showers over the north and west, tending to the west and far south later in the day. Showers in Adelaide tomorrow. Showers also for Melbourne, along with a storm there, uh, but fine and mainly cloudy in Sydney. Showers in Brisbane and Darwin, 33 with a shower. Partly cloudy in Hobart, it's 14 at the moment, 12 in Launceston, a bit of cloud about and cloudy in Devonport and 12. With that cold front and all those troughs coming, Joe, we're not going to chase this rain away. It'll be here soon. OK, thanks for that, Murph. Before we leave you tonight, Dreamworld has revealed its newest additions. Two male cubs were born at the Gold Coast theme park on Friday. The pair weigh just over a kilogram each and are yet to be named. The cubs are the seventh litter born at Tiger Island since it opened in 1995. They'll remain in the nursery den for the next two weeks before their public debut next month. And that's all from the news team for now. Have a lovely evening. We'll see you a little later with news updates. Bye for now.